Welcome to another video. Ready made G5 RVs. Half size uh, G5 RVs, 450 ohm ladder line. This is 450 ohm ladder line. Anyway, let's talk a bit more about antennas for small gardens. Right, well, thanks for joining me again. And uh, as I said, uh, we're on part four of this uh, series now. Just want to show you this before we start. This is a great investment. <laughs> This is um, RG58 Coex, and I know it's, uh, as I said before, it's had some bad press, but uh, this is straight off the uh, warehouse shelf. And let me sh just show you what uh, RG58 should look like. Well, there we are, that's um, Coex for you. It's always worth uh, getting um, some decent quality Coex. So where were we? Yes, the G5 RV. What we, we've actually been through um, the basic G5 RV and discussed that. And of course, it's for many, it's just the antenna is just too too long. So let's go on to the modifications. I think one of the um, most uh, um, notable modifications <laughs> is from uh, ZS6BKW. Um, he set about trying to improve the uh, matching uh, in, all, in order to get the VSWR down. And he succeeded that uh, in doing that. Um, he didn't do much for the 80 meter band, but he certainly got 40 meters and 20 meters down. Um, he also um, managed to get a decent match on uh, 17 meters. Uh, 21 uh, megahertz, 15 meters um, was not um, uh, a goer. Uh, with his um, revamp design 10 meters was okay but what he did do he managed to get the uh, vswr down to a more acceptable level on the bands that uh, um, it covered and if you go on the uh, internet so you'll find uh, details of the zs6 bkw modification um, all credit to him because he did do an awful lot of work and uh, he achieved that basically in very, in very broad terms. What he did, he reduced the length of the antenna by about three meters or so, and he increased the length of the feeder. And those two in combination produced a, a much better VSWR on certain bands, but not on others. So uh, in, in, in many respects, it's an improvement over the G5RV, but of course it's not a G5RV because as soon as you reduce the length of the antenna, then you modify the actual polar diagram. But uh, uh, if you can lop off three meters of an antenna, maybe it'll fit in your garden, but maybe it won't, <laughs> maybe it won't. Before we go, there's one other uh, guy I want to mention as well. W5DXP, it's not a cool sign that um, I've really come across, but uh, I, I have heard about him, but he set about improving the ZS6BKW design. <laughs> so there's um, so been a lot of work um, since uh, Louis Varney first uh, came up with the basic uh, idea or concept. And W5DXP, his challenge was to actually make the ZS6BKW antenna resonant at a low VSWR on all the ham bands from 80 meters right to through to six meters, including the walk bands. <laughs> and um, I have to admit, he did a pretty good job. I mean, if you look at the VSWR uh, curves uh, uh, that he achieved, and I'll put them up on the screen now, just, just have a look. And there you are, you see, you can see that he's achieved um, an incredible, Incredible low VSWR at all the major hand bands throughout the HF spectrum. <laughs> but, but, and here's the but, it was more than just a simple modification. He, he managed to uh, achieve a low VSWR on 80 meters, which of course is, um, is no mean feat. And he did that by putting in a serious capacitor uh, in the feed line uh, at the point where the coax cable joins the, um, the, the, the balanced line. And I think he used a 750 puff uh, serious capacitor. 
Uh, that capacitor looks almost like a short circuit as you go higher in frequency, so it didn't actually affect the, the other bands. But it did bring the VSWR down to around about two to one or so on uh, on the 80 meter band. So that was that was worth doing. Um, of course, it does mean to say that you you start to um, uh, add components to the basic antenna. He then went on to actually improve the VSWR on some of the other bands. If, if some of the bands were missing, for example, 15 meters. But it does start to get complicated because it means to say you've got to add a relay and you've got to add capacitors and it's a remote switching and so forth. So in some respects, uh, many I think would think, well, wait a minute, um, is this really worth the effort? And I think he even makes, makes that point that uh, there is an extra lot of work involved. But he did actually achieve an antenna without traps that resonated on all the major HF bands uh, and the antenna's uh, length was uh, in, in feet was about 92 feet or something like that I think. So another successful modification, um, uh, I would say it's not a modification, is it a modification of the G5RV? I'm not so sure it's a modification, I think what, what, he, what uh, these guys have done is they've taken the concept and produced an antenna that is resonant at a lower VSWR than originally was the case. But in so doing, they've had to change things. And uh, in changing things, of course, you start to move away from the original uh, Louis Viney concept, of course, that it was basically a 20 meter antenna. Anyway, a lot of you have got small gardens, uh, at least smaller than Louis had, and uh, we need to look at other alternatives um, but so we're going to we're going to carry on with this concept of uh, of, the, of the G5 RV. But let, let's look at um, what else we can do. I suppose, really and truly, one of the most popular antennas for the small garden is going to be the half size G5 RV. Now, the half size G5 RV is exactly what you would imagine it to be. Its dimensions are exactly half the size of the original G5 RV. And that means that it can be fitted into the smaller garden. I'm going to put up on the screen now a line drawing of the half-size G5 RV. And as you can see, there's, it's basically exactly the same as the full size. The only change, as I say, <laughs> is the dimensions. But it does mean to say that uh, it takes up a lot less room. And of course, you can also uh, install it as an inverted V. If you install it as an inverted V, then you know you could easily get it into a garden that's just uh, 40 foot uh, long. And I think earlier in the series I did emphasise that um, if you have an inverted V, uh, it's a very simple antenna to install in a small garden because you just need one central support. Um, that support is taking uh, the basic weight of the antenna. The most important part of the antenna, the centre, is uh, up in the air and uh, it's got a lot going for it. <laughs> the ends of uh, any dipole antenna really are, um, their, main, their main importance is to bring the whole system to resonance, but the, the bit that uh, ca uh, matters most is generally around about the centre of the antenna or where the uh, points of uh, a maximum current are. So G5RV, well, basically it'll cover 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. And uh, certainly a lot of uh, hams uh, use it as a basic 40 and a 20 metre antenna. And uh, you can coax it onto the walk bands, but you have to accept uh, some, uh, some uh, VSWR. But that really is what uh, this series has been about. Um, the fact that don't get too het up with VSWR. <laughs> if you, let's face it, if you've got a small garden, uh, you're going to have to make some compromises. And I think that uh, VSWR is not a serious compromise, really, because um, the losses on coax are not as great as you might imagine. What I've done um, underneath this video, the, the, the text underneath, um, I've put a link in, which I think... I think it's quite an important link actually, because it actually enables you to calculate what loss you'll get on your coax cable, depending how long it is, what type of cable it is, and what the VSWR is. And I encourage you to go onto that site 
and check it out because um, it's a, a very interesting site. So, yes, half size for 5RV. Uh, I think at this point it's worth also discussing um, whether you need a ballon and what sort of ballon you need. Uh, I think the jury's out on this really because there's so many uh, hams that use a um, five RV and make a direct connection between the coax cable and the balance line. Uh, there's those who use a ballon and they will say to you, yes, they've got a, they use a ballon because they think you need a ballon. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the thing that you do need is some form of line isolation. Now a ballon, uh, whether it be a one to one or four to one, will give you a measure of line isolation. Um, alternatively, just put a line isolator in um, at the point where the coax um, meets the um, balance line. Now, you can argue about uh, whether you need a line isolator or not. I personally think you do, and I'll tell you for two reasons. The first is that you don't want common mode RF flowing on the outside of the coax because it causes problems. Um, it will actually distort the polar diagram, but I don't think that's, that's terribly important in a small garden because there's other things that will also distort it. But you don't want common mode currents flowing for two reasons. First of all, it can upset the auto ATU and its ability to match, and also it can get into the power supply, and I've known power supplies to shut down. The other reason is that if you have common mode currents flowing on the coax, you will tend to get erroneous VSWR readings. The VSWR meter will not actually read the truth. And you can make a fairly simple test by this. Just get a, uh, an extra length of coax cable with the connectors on, and first of all, put the VSWR meter in line with the coax and, and just check the VSWR at seven, on several bands at seven po several points. Then, Put in an extra length of coax cable, so about another three metres of coax cable, and then repeat the procedure. You should find that that VSWR doesn't change. If the VSWR on the metre changes from what you had on the shorter length of the cable, then you are suffering with common mode currents on the outside of the coax, and you certainly need a, uh, um, a, a choke there. So that's my, that's my take on that. Well, one of the things I like to do is, if I find a website that uh, adds or adds some information to what I'm talking about, then I like to uh, mention it. And there's one website that uh, I've got here, which is um, g3src.org.uk. And on that website is a very interesting article by um, Mike Parkin, G G0JMI. And... He covers in quite a lot of detail the G5 RV, some very interesting uh, drawings and some polar diagrams. And I think that if you're thinking about the G5 RV, whether it be full size or half size, then um, check uh, that website. And I've put a link to it um, underneath this video in the text section of this video that you'll find a link. So take a look. But <laughs> there's an interesting antenna that, uh, well, he calls it a derivative. Now, I guess it's something he's um, um, adapted from the basic uh, G5 RV concept. But let me tell you a bit more about it. It's quite a quite an interesting antenna if you've got a small garden. Um, right, now I'm going to put it up on the screen now. Um, and you can see that uh, it's only 8.4 metres long. The uh, ladder line, which he has uh, used 300 ohm uh, ladder line, um, has got a length of 2.6 meters, and uh, it seems to cover. Uh, now where are we? It's, it's somewhere here. Um, oh, here we are at the bottom. Here, uh, it covers 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, 10 meters, and 6 meters. That's uh, that's quite a uh, a lot of bands for such a small antenna. I mean, cost cost wise, you know, eight or nine meters of wire, less than three meters of ladder line. 
obviously need some coax cable to link it back to the uh, radio um, but uh, that seems to be um, quite an interesting antenna now it's not clear whether he's tried this out I, 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 I guess that he's uh, fairly confident because he's um, he's done a whole thesis almost on the G5RV but very if, if you if you're watching um, uh, Mike well done it's nicely laid out and um, well, it's, you know, you couldn't get a smaller wire antenna um, or at least a smaller cost-effective wire antenna than that. So I think I might uh, try this out myself. <laughs> give, it, give it a whirl. <laughs> well, there we are. That's uh, the end of part four. Next time, part five. What I'm going to cover in part five is um, shortening aerials and um, how you can create your own wire aerial exactly as you want it to fit your garden so there we are i'm gonna have a go on the uh, radio now see what i can work <laughs> i do believe there's a contest on but there we are one of those things anyway thanks for watching this video don't forget um, if you enjoy these videos please press subscribe and until the next time Enjoy your ham radio. <laughs>